Hi, I'm Joe Estano. Today we're going to be covering work holding and the, the proper way to hold the part throughout the shop on different machines. So we start off with our milling machine and some of the parts of the milling machine that you'd be interested in is your on-off switch. You know, you got a high and a low. You want to make sure that your speed range is high and low. If you can swing around and show them that. If the knob is in high, then you want to turn your spindle on in the high direction. If you bring this back and you're in low, you want to make sure you're in the low direction. That'll give the proper rotation of the tool, right-handed cutting. Okay, so to hold the part, we can hold it on the, this device. We can hold it on this surface right here, and we know we're parallel. Or we can raise it up if need be. We use these parallel. Now, parallel are used standing up only. They're not parallel in this flat direction here. This is where they're parallel. And you can see, we raise the part up. And we can take our cut. This is your quill. Bring the quill down a little bit. Come in. And you can take a cut on the back. In the X direction, Y direction, and we can even bring this over to a location if we need the holes. You can also raise the table up and down using the handrail. So you have two ways of raising the part or lowering the part in this setup what we're going to do is use the jaws that have a step milled in them so we don't need the parallel okay. so in this case you just drop that part on tap it down and you're locked in place and in this setup if we had a long part we could set a stop in the end and no that as we take the part in and out, if we had several pieces, we'd be back in the same location. And then you can turn the machine on and do your milling and fill your holes. In this setup, we have a hex collet. This is called a collet block. We have a hex. And then we have a square. I'll show you the difference. Two different setups. We find the key, drop that in, put our part in, tighten up on the nut, and you would mill your hex to the depth of the size you want. This is a half inch diameter call it set up same way as the lock. It has a stop. So if your machine several pieces, you can just drop them in, push against the stop, and you know the parts are all going to be machined the same. Set. No. Let me show you this. The collet stock, which is hanging off the other end, this blue piece, this just slides into the back. And this arm can be adjusted forward or back, depending on the length that you need. Just tighten up on this nut, and it locks itself in place. If you need to work with a large piece such as this, it's 12 by 24, we have a bridge that we put on the machine that can handle that. And the bridge has a rectangular plate here that drops down over the jaws. And locks in place. And then we can take our sheet. You 
can line the sheet up with the back edge, knowing that this is perpendicular to your jaws and parallel with the machine base. You can lock that base. Using the Kanka damp twist clamp. Always use two clamps, never one. No matter whether you're on a milling machine, a drill press, you always use two clamps. And then we can take our time. Okay, I'll just show you a, a quick trick to make sure you're lined up, square and perpendicular. Use the back of the column of the milling machine, push it up against it. Take your clamps, lock them in place. And you know you're parallel and perpendicular to the base of the machine. In this setup, we're going to hold a round piece accurately. There's a V45 cut into these jaws. You can put the part in, close the vise. I want to add one thing here. This is your movable jaw. This, your indent block or jaw should be in the back where this jaw does not move. That holds it in place perfectly. We're in back gears, a slow spindle speed, and then we can do our drill. You want to change speeds, we move to that high position on the right hand side, and go to high, and, that turn, and then you can drill. If you wanted to stand the part up, you change jaws in the vertical direction. Drop them in place, you tighten them up. In this setup, we're going to hold a round part and show you how to use the dividing head to drill holes 90 degrees apart. What I'm doing here is tightening it up, it's drawing that collet in, and we're locked in place. There's notches on the top here, and I'm going every 90 degrees and stopping and locking into that position to get my four holes at 90 degrees. If need be, you can bring your tool into the work, unlock, the positioner, and mill a groove on the surface. In this setup, I'm going to show you how to lock down a plate onto the bed of the milling machine. This is a T-slot. This is a T-nut. Slide that in to the T-slot. This is your finger. And we have a step block in the back. These match up. So what you do is put that down and hold it parallel. Slide this block up until they meet. You either want to be parallel or one step up to get the proper clamping action. You don't want the clamp to be like this. You want it flat, parallel, or a step up. Lock that side. This side. Now to help us get the part square, we can take the combination square 
put it on the back surface of the table, line it up until it's square, and then you can lock that in place. And that's how you would hold large pieces or plates that you have to mill. In this setup, we're going to be taping with a double-sided tape. One important thing is make sure you never overlap the tape if you have multiple strips going on to your piece to be machined. So I'll show you in this case, we're going to go leave it about an eighth separation between the two pieces. I like to cut off the excess. And then we peel the back side off. You want to have a clean surface in the machine itself as well. Push down hard, firmly press it onto the block, and we're good to go. To remove it, we have a nice sharp screwdriver that we pop it off. Here's our part. Now you can use this method for hold down on a manual machine as well.